among the two uh, most fundamental challenges in the field of quantum science uh, um, and engineering is the challenge of uh, trying to maintain the coherence or in other words quantum mechanical behavior for the uh, uh, large-scale quantum system such as for example quantum computer as well as uh, what I uh, referred earlier to application challenge. And the application challenge means is that by now we have in our laboratories the systems composed from uh, several quantum bits. They can be viewed as a kind of small-scale quantum computers and we uh, gained um, a quite a substantial degree of control over the systems and we can measure and manipulate them very precisely. What we would like to do now is to look for applications of the systems. One uh, of such applications uh, naturally emerges um, due to fragility of the uh, quantum states. So uh, indeed, you know, the quantum superposition states are very sensitive to external perturbations and while this is uh, the main problem for realization of quantum uh, uh, computers, this property makes it possible to utilize these quantum systems as sensors of external perturbations. Perhaps one of the most well-known examples of, uh, uh, of uh, such an application is an atomic clock. So an atomic clock makes use of the superposition states uh, of uh, isolated atom to essentially define the standard of time, the second. Work on atomic clock, uh, on atomic clocks uh, have been going over the past half of a century. Uh, in fact, it preceded, it motivated the development of, quant of the entire field of quantum science and engineering. And by now, atomic clocks play a really important role in our society. For example, they um, imagine, uh, they um, enable uh, things like global positioning system. At the same time, over the past decade or so, um, an intensive research has been uh, carried out into identifying and studying new types of quantum bits. In other words, the new types of quantum systems which can be isolated, manipulated and measured. So it turns out that uh, some of those systems can uh, be uh, pretty robust and indeed we can now implement uh, uh, small scale quantum computers which uh, are composed from several quantum bits inside the solid state uh, system uh, and we can um, uh, control, manipulate and measure them under ambient conditions at room temperature. Those uh, type of systems can be extremely small. They can be nanometer on, in their uh, size scale, uh, which uh, makes uh, them uh, quite unique um, candidates for the realization of new generation of nanoscale quantum sensors. The reason why this is the case is because if we can create the superposition of uh, these uh, states of those quantum systems and we can measure them, we can explore the sensitivity of these superpositions to external perturbations such as due to the external electric fields, magnetic fields or temperature to measure these physical uh, properties of surrounding objects and we can do it now um, uh, with very high sensitivity, but also on very small length scale, on length scales down to few nanometers, which is uh, impossible with any other existing uh, uh, technologies. So um, the specific uh, direction which uh, my group is currently exploring involves the use of um, uh, impurities in uh, diamond which behave like an isolated uh, atom-like objects. So they are essentially uh, atomic scale and they also have properties 
uh, which are very similar to those of um, isolated atoms. So those uh, isolated atoms, however, uh, are sensitive to the surrounding environment and in fact uh, they can be explored to uh, measure um, uh, electromagnetic fields or to measure temperature. What, is, what makes them uh, especially unique is that uh, these impurities can be um, controlled under ambient room temperature conditions and they can be integrated into the uh, living objects. So as a result, we now have a new tool uh, to explore uh, biological systems at uh, completely new uh, scales involving, for example, uh, subcellular uh, resolution. The kinds of uh, applications that this uh, technique might enable us, uh, us to explore is actually wide-ranging, and I'll just give a few examples here. Um, uh, the first example is, rela is related to magnetic resonance imaging. So this is, uh, 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 of course, um, a fairly well-developed uh, technique, which is now used uh, in medicine, and uh, it is actually a unique tool, for example, which enables one to you know, study things like uh, you know, brain and you know, basically diagnose some uh, uh, diseases in a very precise, non-invasive way. However, the conventional uh, magnetic resonance imaging uh, works only on a, a, a length scales which are fairly large. So they are sort of the, the, the best resolution of this technique is about maybe one tenth of the millimeter spatial resolution. By using this, those new novel sensors which we are now developing, uh, it is uh, possible to extend these techniques to length scales which are uh, thousand, fa at least factor of thousand or even more, uh, more um, precise. Specifically, uh, we could uh, um, now explore the realization of the magnetic resonance imaging on very small objects such as, for example, uh, individual molecule. Another direction which is being explored involves the use of uh, this quantum system to uh, measure temperature at some micrometer length scales. The specific idea is that uh, local temperature um, affects these quantum objects in such a way that we could basically read out the uh, local temperature by using uh, optical techniques using laser light. This might also enable some pretty unique applications. For example, uh, local heating is now explored as a cancer therapy uh, to kill cancer cells uh, in, a, in a very targeted way. By monitoring the temperature, it might be possible to dramatically improve the performance of this kind of methods. And you know, these techniques can have a real world kind of relatively near term applications. One final example uh, uh, that I'd like to give involves a grand challenge, it was a, involves an application to the grand challenge in another uh, domain of physics, which is a brain science. So brain science is uh, by now a very active field where researchers are really trying to understand and unravel uh, the ways how our brains uh, work. One challenge there is to develop novel tools and techniques which might allow us to monitor the brain activity. By using the uh, nanometer size quantum sensors, it might be possible to monitor the brain activity in uh, uh, some remarkable ways in real time and uh, uh, explore some unique applications involving, for example, the interface between brains and machines. Obviously, the performance of the sensors is a key factor in all of the applications which I have described. One of the questions which, uh, in my view, is extremely intriguing is to what extent uh, we can take advantage of techniques such as 
um, for example, quantum entanglement, which basically is a correlations between different particles which you can create uh, through quantum mechanical interactions to enhance the performance of the sensors. So this is a very fundamental question. Under idealized laboratory conditions, it is possible to create this kind of entangled state. And as a matter of fact, this is a key to the operation of the quantum uh, computers, to the speed up that quantum computers enables, uh, enables us to do. And the question is, can we take advantage of this kind of quantum mechanical entanglement to improve the sensors operating under realistic laboratory conditions, perhaps even inside of the living objects, inside of the living cells? So uh, this is one important question. Another important question um, uh, is uh, related to what I would say is a killer application of these uh, ideas. And um, the fundamental question is whether this uh, new generation of quantum sensors uh, will enable us to really do uh, biology or biomedicine at a fundamentally new uh, level. Will it enable us to uh, uh, treat uh, diseases at subcellular levels? Will it enable us to really understand how the brain uh, work? These are all you know, questions which we have to address and explore. They're all interdisciplinary questions. So where essentially quantum science and engineering brings up the tool, but of course this tool has to then sort of be coupled to the uh, real systems, sometimes living systems. And you know, to what extent can we really use this speed up, which or additional sensitivity, which um, uh, pro is provided to us by a quantum system is something which we are still exploring.